this will show to you why killing bees, number one, it's not right, number two, it's usually not legal, and number three, it doesn't work. It seriously doesn't work, and you'll see why. I think that is all wax moth defecation. I don't know, honey, underneath it, look. No way. Today, we're off to one of our least favorite jobs to do when it comes to dealing with bees. We've got what's called a dead out, where some unscrupulous pest controller at some point, I think it was about five years ago, came out and they killed the colony off. And basically, we're going out now to remove all the old colony. Well, you'll see in a moment, we'll show you some videos of how the honey has start, started to leak out. Um, it's gonna end up costing the customers thousands of pounds to put this right. Uh, not from our bill, mind you, our bill isn't that small either. But this will show to you why killing bees, number one, it's not right. Number two, it's usually not legal. And number three, it doesn't work. It seriously doesn't work and you'll see why. This is gonna be a horrible job. It's the hottest day of the year in the UK. It's already, it's 10 to 11 and it's 34 and a half degrees. So we're expecting to maybe hit 40 degrees this afternoon and we'll be covered in melting wax and dripping horrible putrid honey. Let's get on and see what we see. This is why killing bees in the long term really doesn't get rid of your bee problem because this is all honey that's running out of a colony that was killed out i think the lady said about five years ago and our job today is we're going to have to take all this contaminated honey out to cut all the plasterboards down we're hoping that the colony only starts there it might go into the other flat roof on the other side but when you get tempted to kill bees because it's a cheaper option well, it's not really, because this is what happens, and this could be running down inside your chimneys, it could be running down the walls, as you can see here, and this really isn't nice stuff, it's sticky, it's worse than a water leak by far, and this lady's gonna have to have all this ceiling redone once we're gone. And uh, it's time to open this up and see what horrors we find inside then. Let's get on. What Rick is gonna do now, we've cut around the plasterboard where the main colony should be, or dead colony. And what we're gonna do now is the big reveal of horribleness. It's coming. Oh, here we go. There's a load of dead bees. Oh. Oh, there's loads of bees. Look, can you see it? Can move that out of your way? Oh, the wax moths up there. So that's another thing that comes off the old colony. Oh, look at them in the corner, yeah, the wax what, moths. Them about, yeah. Jesus. Look at all those. I've got an idea, yeah. So wax moths have been eating the wax off the unguarded, protected colony. They've been killed out. The smell is... Wow. We need to lift this out. You can show everyone what's in the back of this. Come on, then. I've got this corner. This seems very heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, look how the, how the honey has soaked through the plasterboard there. This would have just got worse and worse, wouldn't it? Wow. It's turned into soil. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Awful. Oh, those are wax moths, aren't they, Wesker? Yeah, that's the, the cocoons, the wax moths. Oh, this wow. is what's left of the honey. Wow. Oh, my God. Look at the wax moths. They've had a bright field day there, haven't they? Well, they've kind of done us a little bit of a favour. Look at it down there. It looks like a wasp's nest. But it's actually just piles and piles of wax moths that have eaten all the old comb. Weirdly, there's one piece of comb right in the centre there. <laughs> so we have to see how far it goes back into here as well, won't we? Right. And this is why killing bees isn't the answer. Because this would have just got horribler, horribler and horribler. I was expecting to see loads of different types of uh, beetles in there as well. Uh, because beetles love any kind of dead and dying thing. Uh, whether the beetles already done, gone in and done their thing. But quite often this can lead to other pests as well. Um, the beetles themselves, quite often the beetles that are feeding on this will actually be carpet beetles and then they'll come out somewhere else in your house and start eating your carpets. So the knock-on effect of killing bees is just, it's never ending, it's never ending. And who knows how many bees this has killed because there's insecticide in here and when bees have found where the old colony was and started robbing it, they'll have been taking that insecticide back to their colonies, which is really 
really sad and upsetting, isn't it, really? The only way you should deal with bees is to take them out live, put them in a hive and keep them for the rest of your days. That's what we do. That's what your pest controllers should be doing. If they're not doing it, you're probably breaking the law by letting them do what they're doing. And like I say all the time to people, it may be a cheaper option to kill the bees, but in the long term, it's really not because look at this. It's just disgusting, isn't it? Absolutely disgusting. And just on that point as well, if there are any pest controllers out there who uh, feel this is too much of a challenge or it's something they don't want to do, and I completely understand that because as you've probably seen on loads of our videos, it can be very hard work. It can be very dangerous work and very painful work on some days. If you're a pest controller and you're struggling with this kind of stuff, we can help you out with training courses. We can help you out by doing the jobs for you. Just let us know. Talk to us in the comments. You can always find us on Facebook as well, Pest Interceptors. We're here to help and we're here to help the bees as well. Don't do this. Get it done properly. And now let's get all of this stuff out the cavity and then we'll take it, get it disposed of properly. This is going to be horrible. One of us has got to put our hand in there, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally one little bit of comb left, look. All the rest has been eaten. <laughs> one tiny bit of comb. You know, I think that could have been, it could have been oh, a swarm that's turned up. a swarm up, has come in. And it's tried to set up shop and then it's realised this is... I think that is all wax moth defecation. Oh, there's all honey underneath it, look. No way. Because oh. remember that time when we had that box? Um, uh, yeah, that's all, poo, it? all that's the poo in it. It's all the little black balls in it. Yeah. I don't think the beetles have had a chance. I think the wax moths have. I've never seen so many wax moths. It's a, it's a very peculiar smell. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? A bit like uh, treacle. Treacle and death is what it smells like. <laughs> so if you want treacle and death smell in your house, kill your bees. <laughs> Look at this, look at this. This was all once wax comb that has been eaten by, these are the chrysalises of the wax moths. And basically the, mass, the, the maggots of that, the caterpillars, they've eaten all the wax. And this is their poo, basically. This is the poo of the wax moths. Absolutely grotesque. Imagine how Could many poos. That, that's literally how many poos there, yeah, like you say. Billions of poos. Yeah. And now it gets even more horrible. Horrible. Lovely chair play. That's that, that was some comb once upon a time. Oh, it feels so horrible. Clean all that out. Is that one okay? Yeah, that one's pretty clean. That was lucky. And then that direction, I can see some more comb down there. Look at all those wax moth caterpillar cases. That's scary. That that there basically is an inch and a half of caterpillar poo, isn't it? Yeah. How many millions of caterpillar poos makes up an inch and a half of <laughs> detritus? Look at all this. I saw that I'm ripping down through the plasterboards. Maybe just knock it all out onto this. What's your hand, Seth? Okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do is just grab it with my hands. It's kind of pointless doing it with that. Can I eat the. Oh, yeah, that's where the wax moths have eaten the, the hexagons, basically. Those would have been standing proud by a couple of centimetres. Not them. Yeah. The bane of every beekeeper's life, wax moths. Same on that one, yeah. Because yeah. it's the wax that they eat, isn't it? It's not the honey. They're not interested in the honey, crazily. But then as they start eating the the comb, then basically oh, all the... Look at that. Oh, that's gross. That is gross. And they start, it all starts leaking out of the fronts of the comb and the back of the comb. And the bees can't suck it up fast enough and then this starts happening. It's so hot. <laughs> it's, it's, oh. And now the real fun starts. 
Can you call this fun? I must be mad. The long gloves are on. Now it's time to get rid of all of this. Remember all of these, these are moth, moth cases. Absolutely gross. I think this big piece might come off in one. of it is grotesque to say the least. There they are. Look at that. Imagine how many moths was in here. That is pretty grim isn't it? I've still got to try and get down there and reach those bits of comb. In fact, I might be able to use the camera to look at what I'm actually doing while I'm doing it. So you can come to work with me today. Still gonna get my head in here. Oh, horrible, sticky, hot, sweaty. Ready the foot up. Most days. As you can see, there's no honey in any of this. This has probably been robbed. Uh, the pest controller who did this did do the job correctly when you could use insecticides because he sealed all the holes up. But then over time, what happened is the, uh, the silicon that he'd used to block up the holes came undone. And uh, then robbing bees started. Well, there wasn't a lot to rob after these moths had had their way. One more look at those. Gross. Gross, 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 gross. And like I say, each one of those is a case that a caterpillar has gone into, a moth caterpillar, then hatched out as an adult moth. Lovely. This is one seriously hot day. I'm dreading taking these gloves off, they're going to be full of my own sweat, which is always lovely. As you can see, cleaned all this out now. I'm going to give it a spray with some, uh, some masking chemicals. And then I'm going to fill it all in with insulation. And Ricky can put the boards back in and... Uh, time for the pub, I feel. This is truly artwork. 38 and a half degrees according to the, according to the truck. So I think it's nearly 40 degrees now. And that's the flat roof right above there. So no wonder I'm a bit warm. So now we've biosided it, used some masking chemicals as well. As you can see, it's all cleared out in that void now. Just doing a little bit more cleaning up. These wipes are superb, absolutely superb. Uh, and then what we're going to do, well I'm going to do while Ricky cuts the plasterboard out there, is I'm going to fill the void space up with some insulation. If this had been filled in with insulation in the first place by the builders, the bees wouldn't have got in in the first place. God bless them. Bad builders. We love them. And just to uh, put into perspective, as you know there was all honey running down here and there and there was a crack along the ceiling along here. You can see at the start of the video. I mean, this is a pile of honey that I've just found. But it had actually been dripping down for weeks and weeks, look. So this could have attracted a million other beasties as well to the sticky sweet, now horrible honey. Nearly done now.